everybody. I'm Jeannie Rosner. So happy that you're here. Um, I am the founder and organizer behind Soul Food Salon, where our mission is to hopefully educate and inspire us all to live a healthier life. Um, we hold monthly events where we feature different health and wellness experts, and we do um, talks and cooking events. This happens to be our very first virtual cooking event. So cross our fingers. It's going to be awesome. We have a website, soulfoodsalon.com, where everything that we've done in the past is up there. Um, anything that we've written, many of our salons are there. Any information, PowerPoint presentations, everything is there. So you, I think it's, you could spend a lot of time on that website. Um, I'm pretty active on social media, mainly Instagram. And that is, uh, you can follow along, Soul Food Salon, all one word. Um, again, my goal is to inspire us all to live healthier lives. So I post different recipes and a lot of like ev evidence-based science. We have a YouTube channel as well, again, Soul Food Salon, where many of my salons have been recorded and the recordings are available there. This salon is being recorded today. Uh, once we are finished, um, I'll do a little bit of editing and upload it to YouTube, and then it will be on our YouTube channel, Soul Food Salon, so you could follow along. And I will also send out an email probably tomorrow to those that are on my email list um, with a link to this uh, salon. If you're not on the email list, you could either, um, you could just go on my website, again, soulfoodsalon.com, and there's a little um, place where you could enter your information. So every year I partner with a different nonprofit, and this year I am partnered with um, a nonprofit in the Bay Area called Fresh Approach, where uh, their mission is to provide um, increased access to local and fresh produce to the at need community. And our project that we're doing with them this year is um, helping uh, bring this mobile farmer's market to Redwood City, which is very, very close to where I live, um, to help bring local produce and fresh produce to that community. So we, uh, they, the first farmer's market went up and ran um, in October, and they're doing it every week, and it's fabulous. And so far, from Soul Food Salon, we've raised over $14,000 for this project. So um, please, if you feel so inclined, it would be wonderful if you can make a donation to help support this project to keep it on going. And that again, you can go on my website, soulfoodsalon.com in kind of the middle uh, of the about page. Uh, there's a link, there's a little bit of information about Fresh Approach and then there's a specific link that they created for us from Soul Food Salon for donations. Um, so our next event is on January 11th, it's a Tuesday and it will be our seventh annual Renew, Recharge, Rejuvenate Yoga event uh, where we feature Clea Tierney. And historically, they were in person. Last year, we did it virtually. And this is going to be our very first in-person event. Um, hope fingers are getting crossed. Um, and that's, again, January 11th. So I'll send out an email about that. So um, today, I have the pleasure to introduce all of us to Marty Wolfson. So she lives in New York. And we met through Rebecca Katz, I believe, is our where we did our lineage. We found that connection. So as uh, a culinary nutritionist. Um, she does a lot of cooking events. She does, um, she kind of partners, which I love. She bridges um, cooking, nutrition, and mindfulness all in, in her life. And when she teaches to help people hopefully reduce their risk for chronic disease and hopefully uh, prevent it and, and perhaps treat it. Uh, she has an active website. She's active on social media as well, um, MW in the Kitchen. And um, so I'm going to let Marty, Marty has a lot of information to share with us today. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, I wish we were together, but this is the best thing we can do right now, right? Um, I want to thank Jean for having me be a part of her salon. I've been teaching culinary nutrition work for almost 15 years, and the last 18 months has been totally virtual, um, which has been sad because I'm such a people person and I, I need to physically be with them, but it's been such a gift to continue to teach and connect through our kitchens. Um, today, we wanted to bring you just a fun holiday cook along. And, you know, I, I was kind of reflecting a little bit on what's coming up with the holidays. And as it pertains to food, I think different things come up for different people around food and eating. So my focus with this hour and a half, just about, is about nourishment. And that word can mean something different for all of you. But to me, it means, um, <laughs> thanks for the heart, Jean. Um, it means comfort, okay? We need 
we need more comforting foods right now, especially in this season. Um, it means health supportive always, that we're supporting our minds and our bodies through food um, and that it has to be delicious. Yeah, I've never, I've never taught healthy food per se um, because I think it has a connotation of one thing and that it's not, it's not good. It's gotta be nutritious and delicious together. So we're gonna get a lot into flavor balancing and flavor enhancement today. And please put in your questions into the chat box, okay, whatever I can answer for you. We are going to be doing holiday-ish uh, recipes. I was thinking as I was designing this, I was thinking about just real like kind of small nourishing bites. One of them being a soup. I always have to have a soup around, especially at this time. And you know, the holiday can get frenetic for people, especially if you have kids at home, if you're entertaining, sometimes people forget to eat because they're so busy cooking and taking care, especially us women, um, <laughs> us natural nurturers. So I think it's so important to have a soup in the fridge to grab and sip on. And I love this broccoli soup. I do tons of iterations on it. I'm gonna improvise with it today probably. Um, it's wonderful for this time of year because it is so supportive of the immune system. It's so supportive of your detoxification systems. And um, it just, it has a lot of fiber too. So it's great for digestion. Okay, so we've got the soup. I'm going to be doing latkes. Yes, Hanukkah is over, but the latkes continue in my household. <laughs> One, because I have a four-year-old and she loves crispy vegetables. And it's a way for me to get in some of those root vegetables that are a little strange and gnarly like celery ac or turnips. Um, so we're gonna play with a combination of root vegetables in the latka. And I thought it would be fun to pair it with something different than like applesauce or traditional sour cream that we use and make an apple chutney, which is, has some really nice peeling spices and you can use it. I mean, it'll keep in the fridge for a couple of weeks and I'll, I'll talk about different ways to use the chutney. Um, we're also gonna be doing a hummus which I think can be a great dipper spread, you know, just for the household or if you're entertaining. And we're gonna just do a, ver a, a version with beets um, for some more antioxidants. And then um, a sweet treat, um, the chocolate halva truffle. I love this, I created it this past year. I'm really into Middle Eastern flavors um, and spices. So it's got chocolate, it's got tahina, which I'm gonna talk a lot about. I use a lot of tahini in my recipes. Um, and we're gonna start with those. So before we begin, I just wanna kind of get everyone on the same page. The way I approach teaching is the way I cook. So I'm, I'm a chef, but I'm, I'm a home cook like you. And that means I multitask. Um, I've been a private chef for 15 years and the key to private chefing, I say anybody can do it if you're a good multitasker. So you might see a couple things going on at once. Don't fret, <laughs> especially if you're cooking with me, it can get chaotic. It's okay, we're just having fun. Um, so multitasking and as I said, I do like to improvise, okay? And that's, to, that's purposeful. That's to get you out of the recipe and into your body when you do these recipes again and think about what else could maybe go in it? What could you play with? What do you have on hand to use up, okay? Flavor, comfort, health supportive, and intuition, okay? My motto is intuition in the kitchen. When you're using your intuition, you're using your whole body in the recipe and not just looking at a, a recipe and doing it robotically. That's how you get to be a, a really great cook, I think, is using more intuition. So if you're cooking along, you know, I think we've all prepped a little bit differently. I left some stuff unchopped to chop in front of you and go over some knife skills. Um, so again, you know, don't worry if you're not exactly with me along the way. There's gonna be a recording and you can watch it again. Okay, we're gonna start with these chocolate truffles. Let me just bring my ingredients over. All right. <clears throat> reason plus is to have you have your ingredients in order. Um, I think that's the nearly um, French translation is to to make it make organized to have have set to have an order. So this is not what I do. I grab and dump just like you probably do. 
but for the purpose of this class, it helps. So the, the base of this is pistachios, incredible source of fiber and protein and antioxidants. I think um, we're gonna grind these up right now together in the food processor. Okay, so we're gonna break them down into like a breadcrumb consistency. And these were just roughly chopped. We're doing this now so that you can chill them and then we can all munch on them together at the end. Okay, so I'll try to point my camera so you can see. So it's like a breadcrumb. Okay. And then we're gonna add everything else but the unsweetened coconut. We're gonna roll it in this. Okay. So we're gonna add tahini. And I love tahini for so many reasons. It's dairy free, it's nut free. So it's great for getting around allergy issues. You know, in Israel, I mean, they, they use so much tahini. It's such a basis of their diet because they often stay away from dairy. And the one I use, here, I'm gonna add all my ingredients and I'll talk about the tahini. So unsweetened cocoa powder. And this is vanilla extract. A little bit of honey, but if you like it more bitter, keep it out. It's definitely sweet from the dates. and then a pinch of salt. Okay, and we're gonna run this again and it should come together. So Marty, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, I did this a little earlier today and maybe my tahini that I used was different from yours. Um, yeah, so tell me if it, I'm gonna pull, I'm just gonna pinch this together and this is ready. Does it look like that? Did it look like that? I did that, but like I had to kind of cram it together. Okay, um, so your tahini was drier. Yeah. You wanna look for, there's lots of great brands now, but I'm addicted to Soom. I don't know if you can see it, the light is. We can't really see it. Do you order that online or do you get that? So I order this, yeah, I order this wholesale by the box because I use so much tahini. Um, these are three sisters out of Philly. And um, I became acquainted with this because of the restaurant Zahav in Philadelphia, the incredible Israeli restaurant. And they use, they solely use their tahini. It's loose, you barely need to stir it. Um, it stays, you know, it stays emulsified and it's just got the right pour. Yeah, um, and it's a one, there's a wonderful book he wrote too called Zahav. So anyway, tahini, incredibly high in calcium, um, great dairy-free form of calcium, high in um, zinc from the sesame seeds. So it's extremely nutritious. I use it, um, we're gonna use it again in, in the hummus, but you could do wonderful dressings, um, uh, sauces with it. Okay, so it should come together, you know, almost like a dough. And then... Someone asked if you could just show the consistency one more time on the... On the batter? Yes. Yeah. So I can just like pull it together like a dough. Okay. Mine was not like that at all. Yeah. It's <laughs> Mine was flaking apart. It's the tahini and it's, you know, it's also um, the, like how the oil is in it, okay? So this, like I can really feel a nice oil on my hands from it. So if it's too, a lot of them are just too dry. That's why I love this one. And when you're making the truffle, sometimes you have to just like, you know, press it together a little bit more as you roll. If it cracks, it's okay, just bring it together. and then we'll roll, okay? 
and it's just kind of hard not to eat it right now, but it is better when you firm it and put it in the fridge. So I just put it in a container like this. And I'm not gonna do all of them for time's sake. I'm just gonna do a few. But this would make such a nice gift box too. I love rolling these in different coatings, like maybe some more cocoa powder, um, some chopped nuts or seeds. Can you share the name of the tahini? It's soom, S-O-O-M, and it means sesame. Some other flavors that would be nice in here is um, you could do some orange zest, right? You could do some dried cherries. I love a raw truffle like this. There's so many ways to go about it. It's a wonderful kind of just pick me up at two, three o'clock in the afternoon or for my daughter at 8 a.m. <laughs> She's always looking for chocolate. Okay, I'm just gonna do one more and then we'll go on. And that didn't take long at all. These are so quick. Um, if you don't have tahini, you can use peanut butter. You could use sun butter. Show a completed truffle. Sure, absolutely. Okay. And they will firm up and get a better texture. I imagine you could put them in the freezer, you know, and then let them thaw a little bit when you're ready to eat them. All right, so I'm just gonna save this in the fridge and I can roll this later. Have you ever used tahini in a smoothie? Yes, yes. And he, he ha Michael Salomonov has this tahini smoothie, I think in his newest book, it's, it's a lot of sugar, but um, it's a great, it's a great fat for a smoothie. Yeah, some mango and banana or, you know, blackberries and tahini. That'd be wonderful. Use it like, you're gonna use it like peanut butter. Someone asked, how do you right? like you might these? put a nut butter in a smoothie. Do you just put these in a glass container in on the counter or you, you have to refrigerate it? I keep them refrigerated so that they stay firm. Mm -hmm. And I haven't frozen them, but again, you could, you could try and see if that works. Let's say you had a long day of work your child was at school, whatnot, and it's 5.30 in the afternoon and you have not made dinner. What would be kind of your go-to for dinner tonight? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. I'm laughing because I had it in my mind I wasn't gonna cook tonight. I've been cooking <laughs> <laughs> but then I pulled out a pizza dough. I mean, you know, for us, it's sometimes some a couple eggs and we make it, I make it into a bowl. Like I love putting that over rice or quinoa with avocado and some roasted vegetables. Um, and we balance, like we're not vegetarians. You know, sometimes I'll grab some chicken breast. I mean, a quick thing for me is chicken thighs marinated in some citrus and herbs, roasted. And I always have greens on hand because we just eat, I mean, we eat kale so much in this household. <laughs> um, I don't know, there's so much, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I do a lot of bowls. I do a lot of sheet pan dishes. Great, thanks. I'm always looking for inspiration. But yeah, I, I always have pizza. Like I always make pizza doughs and keep them frozen. It's such a quick thing. And then we, we just load it up with vegetables. All right, next we're gonna go to the apple chutney only because that simmers for a while. So we're gonna get that in the pot. <clears throat> we're gonna use some Granny Smith because it's nice, a nice sour, sweet note. And we're gonna use three. I've already diced up a couple. So you're gonna peel it, dice it. And I just kept it in some lemon water to keep them from oxidizing. So I'll just peel one more here. Chutneys are just, such a wonderful condiment to have 
in the fridge because it has this beautiful balance of sweet and sour, um, usually some spice like red pepper flakes like we're gonna use today. Okay. So I just cut the sides off. And just about like a half inch cube. And this is wonderful added fiber to a dish too. I could see this chutney with Oh my gosh, everything from chicken to pork chops um, over some like a vegetarian dish with like roasted chickpeas. Okay, so we're gonna combine the apples and some onions into a pot. You just need about a half a cup of chopped onion. This could also be pears, why not? Okay, so I'm gonna dice this half an onion. This is a technical way to do it. This is how you learn it in culinary school if you're not familiar with it, okay? So it's half an onion. I cut some parallel slices nearly to the end so that there's still an anchor. And then I turn it 90 degrees and cut down the line. I'm not cutting all the way through though. I'm keeping that anchor. I turn it again 90 degrees and just do some fine dice. And do you have tears in your eyes from this or no? Nope. <laughs> nope. When anybody asks me, how do you keep from crying? I say, you have to cut fast. You have to learn the proper way and cut fast. That's beautiful what you just did. There is a wonderful TED talk. I'll, I'll see if I can send you that link, Jean, so you can send it out. Um, it's a teacher from Bastyr University who gave a great TED talk where she cuts an onion on stage. Sounds and great. You'll never, you'll never forget how to cut an onion. Okay. And then some ginger. So in case you don't know this trick, a good way to peel ginger you can use your vegetable peeler, but you can also use the back of a spoon. And I think this is easier because then it gets into the grooves and curves and you don't lose so much flesh. Okay. And then we're just doing, I think like a half a teaspoon, which I have here. So I'm gonna add that some cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar, orange juice, honey. Sometimes we'll use sugar. You could use like a coconut sugar. And then some dried mustard seeds. I've got dried mustard seeds, a pinch of salt and a pinch of red pepper flakes. And we're gonna bring this, bring this on medium high heat until it's kind of boiling. And the apples are gonna release more juice for it to simmer in. And you want that, you want all the juices to eventually evaporate. Till you're left with like, um, you know, a chutney consistency. You don't want it really liquidy. So I'm just gonna stir the honey in and we'll let that go. Okay. I cook for this woman. It's just making me think, I cook for this woman who's from England and I've never seen this. When I open her refrigerator, almost, I would say half of the fridge is condiments because I think that's how she grew up with the chutneys and 
you know, things like harissa and all these condiments. And I love that because you can get so much more flavor into your meals. And, you know, we, we, I think we don't, um, we take for granted how much spices can contribute to our nutrition. And we can get so many spices into, into different condiments, okay? We're gonna save the raisins for the end if you're using them, if you're adding them in, okay? Leslie Ballinger said she loves the well-used yellow pan on your stovetop. Thank you very I, much. I mentioned that to uh, Marty earlier, Leslie. I'm very proud of that. Yeah, I've been this past this past year over the pandemic. I've never been a baker, um, and I've been studying this woman who does gluten free baking. She she was a former pastry chef, and so I'm making these gluten free bowls. Maybe you've seen them on my Instagram feed. Um, they're absolutely incredible. Um, her formula is just per perfection. So it, the the bread gets baked in that. <laughs> I think it, that's why it looks more worn. Okay, so next we are going to do the soup. <clears throat> so go ahead and get um, a pot or Dutch oven hot on medium high heat. We're just gonna keep an eye on that chutney, okay? I'm gonna bring over my soup ingredients. I was running a, um, a detox I, I don't like to say detox, but it was a it was a reset. Every January, I'd run a January reset group. And this soup is always part of it. Um, it's just extremely soothing. And again, it's got a lot of elements that are supportive of detoxification, um, which I think a lot of us need through and post holiday, you know? Detoxification, I'm talking about the effect that stress and behaviors and lifestyle can have on us um, through the holiday season. So of course the star being broccoli, major cruciferous, and, I, and I'm including kale today, okay? So I think I put cabbage or some kind of like leafy green like collards or kale. Um, for the onion, I'm using leeks, okay? You can use leeks or onion, doesn't matter. I love the flavor of leeks. That's why I'm just, I'm using it today. Also, those with digest, some digestive issues sometimes tolerate things like leeks and scallions over regular onion. Um, we're gonna put in some garlic, some more ginger, all that anti-inflammatory ingredients, some celery, fennel if you'd like. I know some people aren't into fennel. I'm gonna add some chopped fennel. We're gonna also use the broccoli stems, okay? You chop that up like celery, and then we're gonna make a cashew cream to go with it on top. So let's start with sauteing our onions, okay? And if you're using leeks, they cook faster. So you have to watch that they don't burn. I'm gonna do a couple tablespoons of olive oil, throw in the onion, and always salt right away, okay? When you're doing soups, salt as you go at every layer so that you're not just throwing salt on at the end and you get this top note of it. It should be blended throughout. Okay, so we'll saute these. And I just, I don't want you to get confused, okay? The way the recipe is written is kind of like a dumbed down version. It's kind of like you just then dump the rest of your ingredients in. We're gonna do a little, a little more chefiness here, okay? We're not going to throw everything in. What we're gonna do is saute the broccoli stems because they take longer to cook. We're gonna, we're gonna saute these and celery and fennel together. And we're gonna wait to add in the broccoli florets and the kale or your leafy green about five minutes before we're, we're done. So I like to almost blanch these right at the end and not overcook them. And then you get a nice bright green color to your soup, okay? So it's a little, um, little more technical the way we're gonna do it today. 
All right, let me just chop up some garlic. Couple things about garlic. One, if you feel like you don't digest it well, like I can't really handle garlic, but I'm playing with just taking out, it's like, it's like the inner root. Like you see what I pulled out that very inner. So do you not use that piece? So I'm playing with taking it out. And sometimes that is what bothers people's digestion with garlic. Interesting. It's, some, it, it's something I'm playing with and, you know, it might be anecdotal for people, but, um, but yeah, the other Annie thing- says it's the bitter stem. Yeah, the stem. Just Thank the you. bitter stem. Yeah. Thank you, Annie. A little, a little like geeky nutrition stuff. I mean, some people will chop this 10 minutes before. If you smash it, chop it, break it, you, <clears throat> you activate the two compounds of allicin and alanine that are in garlic and um, it, it increases the antioxidant potential. So some people will stop it, let it sit for 10 minutes and then use it. I didn't think ahead. <laughs> there was too much going on with this prep, but that's okay. All right, and then a little bit of ginger gonna mince up. Those leeks are smelling awesome. So I don't add garlic in until I've got some moisture into the pan until like something like onions has released some juices so that the garlic doesn't burn. Okay, this is gonna go in. And then my celery. Some chopped fennel. And the broccoli stems. And with the broccoli stems, what I usually do is I trim off the end and then I take a peeler and I just shave off the outside. Yeah, because it's, it's a bit tough. Okay, and then I will just dice it up. These are really sweet. It's really nice to use these, don't throw them away. Okay, these are gonna go in. And I've got a little extra potato on hand, so why not? I'm gonna put in some potato. It'll just add a nice thickness and creaminess. It's not necessary. Okay. All right, so a bit of potato, this is kind of big. I'll put that into the latkes. Cutting is all about, it's really about geometry. Like if you want your food to taste a little bit better, Pay attention to the evenness. This isn't like, you know, being about being a pro chef. It's actually that the cutting, the cutting, cutting evenly and proportionally adds to the, to the quality of your dish. Okay, another generous pinch of salt. Saute that. You should be getting some browning at the bottom. That's called the fond, fond, F-O-N-D. And that's what's going to add a great flavor to the broth. So what I always do, oh, I forgot the rest of my broccoli stems, hold on. You 
Yeah, you want some like you want some browning, some sticking down there. That's a good thing. Hold on, I'm gonna stir my chutney. Here's where we start multitasking. Okay, I'm gonna lower it to a simmer and just keep a but like a low bubble on it so that the liquid evaporates and this reduces. So sh should the chunks in the apple, should that become less chunky? Or they just stay soft, they just get softer? They just get soft, they just okay. get soft, yeah. It might cook so much that it, you know, dissolves a little bit, like applesauce. Okay. Okay, so now here's a simple trick to a better soup. First of all, let's talk about broth for a minute. You can use um, a vegetable stock. I had just made chicken stock and it was really intense. So this is actually um, thinned down. So you could use a light chicken stock too that I watered down. And I'm gonna do about six cups. Make sure that there's enough water to go over the broccoli and kale near the end. And my broth is not seasoned. I always get, if I do buy store-bought broth, I get low sodium so that I can season it to my liking. So I'm gonna add some more salt to the broth. Bring this up to a boil. And if you wanted to add herbs, if you want to add some fresh thyme, um, a little bit of like rosemary or a little bit of sage, that's cool. I'm going to try something, everybody, where I'm going to see if I can promote all of you guys to panelists so that we can see everybody <laughs> cooking. Hi, everybody. So fun to cook with you all. This is so great. All right. So can I go on to the cashew cream? Is that cool? Yeah, go for it. Okay, talk to me. My friend okay. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa's cooking with me today. She's my sous, I'm kind of the sous chef and cooker too. <laughs> hey Lisa. Hi guys. And, and moderator and host. So <laughs> before I go on to the cashew cream, I just wanted to show you something with broccoli and this goes with cauliflower too, okay? Um, the right way, well, I don't like to say right, but a better way to cut it in case you don't know is to go from the stem down. You know how like you cut into a head of broccoli and cauliflower and like it starts to all fall apart. If you go from the stem with a paring knife, you can get some nice even florets. Nice. You see what I mean? Okay, just a little trick. So I'm just gonna cut this into small florets for when we need it. I love the trick. That's like the pearls that you get from from these events, I think are right. Are, I love the the one point that you said is to salt the soup as you're going, as opposed to like I just often will just dump at the end and no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, every layer a little bit. It may seem like too much, but it's not. your your food is just gonna taste better. You're gonna enjoy it. Those that might be nervous about too much salt in your prepared food, it's really, you're getting more salt in your processed food when you're eating chips and breads and whatnot. So um, absolutely, yep. and when you cook at home, you really can control the quantity of salt that you put into your food. And I know I'm going to get a salt question. I just know it because I always do. Um, what salt do you use when? Well, I primarily use sea salt. I, you know, I shouldn't say it. I go back and forth between sea salt and kosher salt. Kosher salt I do for like, you know, over roasted vegetables, seasoning meats and fish. Um, it has a little bit bigger surface area. And then sea salt um, I use in like my sauteing and dressings and sauces. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So kind of your more generic, you use the kosher salt and for yeah. Like more... Yeah. And look, if you have thyroid, like I have thyroid issues. So I, I am conscious about buying iodized sea salt for a little more iodine. So if there's thyroid issues, um, which there's a lot <laughs> with us women, um, I definitely recommend an iodized sea salt. All right. Chutney is 
boiling away. The soup is almost up to boil. And then what I like to do is um, the, the vegetables that are in there, they take about 15, 20 minutes to soften. So I'll cover it and just, um, and just let it simmer. Let me get my lid now. Have you added all the other vegetables yet? I can't really see. I've added everything but the broccoli florets and the leafy greens or the, Great, the cabbage thanks. or kale. Yeah, I'm gonna chop up my kale. So what I do is I pull the leaves off and then I just roll it. I don't know why in culinary school they say, roll it into a cigar. Why? <laughs> <laughs> they could have used another visual. <laughs> I think it's the bad habits in the culinary world. So okay. I, um, I was in touch with Marty yesterday because I kind of really wanted to prep a lot ahead of time. Um, so that I could be more the moderator today and not necessarily the chopping stuff. So maybe Marty, maybe you could talk about some of the things that you could do ahead of time. Let's say you're having people over for dinner later tonight and you wanna get as much prepped as head before you cook. What would be some of the things that you could do or that you would recommend? Um, well, generally speaking, I mean, I chop as much as I can. I chop onions. I wrap them, I keep it in the fridge, let's say. Um, root vegetable, like you were asking about, can you do the latkes? The root vegetables will oxidize. So I say, don't, don't prep them until right before you're ready to cook them. Um, I like, even when I come home from the farmer's market every weekend with my leafy greens or like broccoli, I chop them down so that they're ready or they're going to get stuck in the back of the fridge unused. You know what I mean? That happens to all of us, right? So I always, strip my kale, my chard, my collards, wash them, spin them, put them in a Ziploc bag with some paper towel and they stay so much longer and then they're ready. Um, and I cut my cauliflower and broccoli into florets, you know, as often as I can, because it makes me want to use it. Does anybody in the audience have a trick? Um, I chopped a bunch of onions yesterday and I wrapped them in tin foil and put them in baggies, but my refrigerator still smells of onions a little bit. I only use a glass jar if I'm gonna store onion. Oh yeah, that's a good and idea. I, and I usually like, we'll get a big mason jar because even if you have a glass jar with a plastic lid, it will stink up your refrigerator. That's a great idea. And I try to put cut side down. I know you don't chop onions ahead of time, but I'll do like half of the onion cut inside of a jar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Another thing you can use aluminum foil for is around celery. When you get celery from your CSA farm or from the grocery store, you if you take it out of the plastic and you keep it in aluminum foil, they last a lot longer. Okay, we're going to make this quick cashew cream, which kind of acts like a vegan um, creme fraiche or sour cream. So I, um, I toasted the cashews ahead of time. And supposedly, I don't know how much research has been done on this, but supposedly roasted or toasted um, cashews have more antioxidants than, than raw. I don't know if you've heard that too, Annie or Jean, but um, maybe it's something about opening up, you know, some of the oils. I don't know. But anyway, it, this is going to add more depth of flavor to roasting them. So I put them in the oven um, on just a parchment paper lined pan, uh, 350 for about seven to 10 minutes. My rule of thumb is usually seeds on the stove top to toast and nuts in the oven to roast. And why, why do you differentiate? Because if you were to put cashews onto a pan on a stove top, they're likely to kind of burn, they cook more, they roast more evenly, right? So a larger nut I put in the oven to roast okay. and seeds, you know, they're usually smaller, flatter, and you can just toast them very quickly. Okay. Okay. So these are going to go into the food processor with about three fourths cup of water. Annie, can you um, talk to the uh, advanced glycation end products and, you know, getting nuts that are already roasted or roasting them yourself. I know you, you've, you've shared that with us before. So, so I always like to buy my nuts raw 
because the ones that you buy that are already commercially roasted sometimes rack up a lot of inflammatory factors from the high heat process. Um, so I do what Marty does. I toast them in the oven and I do seeds in the oven too, but I keep a really close eye on them. <laughs> so I think the yeah. stove method is really smart. But advanced glycation end products are inflammatory particles that are created in food from high heat processing, like a lot of processed foods, but also foods that also seem good for you. Like, you know, you pick up a bag of roasted nuts. It seems like it's a pretty healthy choice, but um, which I do sometimes as well. But I always try to get my nuts raw. Okay, so soup is simmering, it's on a low simmer. Um, the chutney is still reducing. And I put the cashews in the three fourths cup of water and chopped up a little bit of garlic. You could also do garlic powder, it per works perfectly well. Um, some lemon juice. I'm gonna grade a nutmeg, some nutmeg in there. And a little bit of salt. And then we'll blend this and it should be a pretty smooth consistency. So I'm just gonna push down the sides. This really needs to be done in a high speed blender to get a super smooth consistency. But it's yummy. You could use this on a lot of different creamy soups, carrot, butternut squash. Um, when it goes in the fridge, when you store it, it'll thicken up a little bit. Um, the nuts will probably absorb more of the water and you could use it as a spread on toast with tomato and basil or, you know, countless, countless versions of that. But you could use it almost like a, like a ricotta. You could use it in a lasagna as a dairy-free sauce. That would be good. Yeah, so you could use this even over pasta on a flatbread. And I'd say this makes like almost a cup. I'll just pour this out. I'm sorry if you answer this. Um, this could stay in our refrigerator for how long would you say? Um, I'd say about five days. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. It's super yummy. Yeah, this would be nice. You know, I'm thinking like an appetizer maybe you serve like stuffed in tomatoes. Um, you, could make a, you could definitely make a nice crostini with it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Allison saying that it'd be a good salad dressing. Yes. Mm -hmm. You might need to just thin it down a little bit. True. But even over like some roasted broccoli or different vegetables, I'm just going to give it a little taste, see where it's at. Mm. Well, that's good, guys, ladies, everyone. Um, soup, going to give a little bit longer. All right, let's get going with the latkes, latke time. So we're gonna get a little more creative. We're not just gonna do potatoes because there's so many great tubers out there. Oh yeah, okay. So there was a mom that had been making these latkes for the school for seven years. You know, I walk in, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to take a back seat. <laughs> not used to that is the main chef. <laughs> so, she had like all these ingredients out, wasn't giving anybody instructions. She's like, I'm like, is there a recipe we're following here? She's like, I'm just doing my grandmother's recipe. You do a bag of potatoes, a half a bag of onions, you know, 12 eggs. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I can tell the proportions are kind of off. And, um, and then I see the vegetable oil and I freaked out. And I was like, oh yeah, right. Not everybody cooks the same. And I had a real humbling moment. And we just had just a ton of fun 
grating and peeling and mixing together. And it was just such a good lesson of letting go of all my food ideals. But today we are gonna use better oil, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Cause we're doing it my way. Um, we are gonna, we're gonna use avocado or grapeseed oil, okay? For, high, for the higher temperature cooking. Um, and I've got, I've got sweet potatoes here. I've got a beet leftover. I have a regular Yukon potato and I've got this enormous celery ac root. So I'm gonna use a little bit of it all. And is that beet, I, you didn't roast that beet ahead of time? Raw, everything's raw. Okay. Um, there was I a roast, comment, um, just to go back on the cashew cream real quickly. Um, Leslie Ballinger commented that the sweetened cashew cream is a great is great in place of whipped cream with desserts. Yes. Yeah. If you take out the gar, thank you for saying that. If you take out the garlic and add like a little bit of maple or honey, that's really nice on a cake or like whoopie pot. You know, you can do so many things with that. Yeah. Right. Thank you. This is what I love about this. Like we all we all have so many great ideas. All right, the chutney is almost ready. I'll show you what it's looking like. I'll just show, hold it up here. Hopefully you can see. I'm just gonna let it go just a teeny bit longer. So it's sweet, it's savory. Okay, so I'm gonna do this in the food processor. I've got the grater attachment. <clears throat> but, you know, with that story, what the other thing I learned was not to be so fussy either. Like we didn't peel the potatoes, everything just went right through the machine. And I love that. They came out, they came out awesome. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna peel right now. So I'm gonna do a little bit of beet. Got this beautiful golden beet. Beets are so incredible. Beta carotene, so many antioxidants, great fiber. The other thing about this, to me, this is like, <laughs> I hate to put it this way, but you know, it's just like a great prebiotic <laughs> latka. All of this, all of these root veggies are, are the prebiotic that we hear about, the food that feeds the good bacteria because they contain resistant starch. Um, it's wonderful to get. I think we get afraid of frying some foods but it's a nice way to get all of this. Okay, I'm gonna definitely wanna peel the celery act and I usually use a knife and I just go right around it. I'm not gonna use this whole thing. It's, celery act is very strong. So I'm probably just gonna use like half of it. But it's wonderful in soups. I add it into mashed potatoes. It has such a nice earthiness to it. All right, so I'll do a little bit of, I'll do two sweet potatoes and some of the white potato. You could do all sweet potato. When I do sweet potato latkes, I love doing shallots and a little bit of rosemary. And they make such a nice, this could be such a nice appetizer for a party you're hosting or going to. One of my favorite combinations is using like standard white potatoes, uh, white potato latka with a little bit, oh, you could do some of this cashew cream and then some lox um, or salmon roe, really nice salmon roe on top. Okay, so just cut it down so that it fits through the food processor. Sorry for the noise. All right, I'm going to read some of the comments from people. 
Jennifer Bressy says she's doing carrots and parsnips. Ooh, nice. And Allison Aldrich says um, your lesson that you had when you cooked with the group at your daughter's school is a good lesson for all of us in many situations. Yeah. And she also said, since Hanukkah was right after Thanksgiving, we had leftover mashed potatoes and made them into latkes by rolling them into latke shapes and frying them. Interesting. Yes. How did they come out? I did the same. Great. They came out good? Interesting. They were delicious. You know, what we did is we had caviar, which I, I don't eat on vegetarian, but we had caviar for the next day, you know, a couple of days later also. And we used them as like the Bellini little yeah. thing that you stick on with the crumb fresh on but they were delicious you know they weren't the texture that I'm used to with the the shredded texture so I was thinking right. they would be more like have you ever had the, the Trader Joe's latkes before um they sell frozen that's latkes how my mom, yeah that's how my mom used to make them she would like put the potatoes just in the regular food processor and blend it and they were fluffy and like mashed potatoes so that's exactly what these are. So yeah, it was part, you'll like them. Yeah, that's nice. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of celery ash. And I'm gonna try some of the, I've never done beets. So this is a first for me. But the color will be pretty. And do some regular potato. All right. All right, so we'll take the grated vegetables and transfer them into a bowl. And I'm gonna shut off my chutney right now. And if your broccoli soup vegetables have been cooking for about 15 minutes, we're gonna add in the broccoli stems and kale or whatever you're using. Just getting a sense that this is ready to be added. Okay, and then make sure you salt these vegetables. You call for peeling the sweet potatoes. What if, is it okay not to peel them? Yes, yes, that's what I was saying. If you wanna just leave it unpeeled, go ahead. Okay, great. Yep. So this is what I mean about intuition. So my recipe said for about five to six cups of stock, but that was a really big head of broccoli I used. So I can just tell that I need more water. The vegetables should really be submerged. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water. And I'm gonna cook that for about just five to seven minutes. I wanna keep the, the color on it. And it should be at a simmer. Okay, back to the latkes. So sometimes recipes use a lot of flour in the latkes and I don't think it's, I don't think it's necessary. Um, my preference is actually just to use a little bit of potato or tapioca starch. I think that's all you need. Um, so we're going to add two eggs and I'm going to add potato starch today. We're going to season them well. And oh, I didn't grate the, I'm sorry, I didn't grate the onion. Put your grater attachment back in. And I just push the onion right through to make it easier. But you can also finely chop it. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the skins off. And 
I wish somebody would make a food processor where big chunks don't get left in your machine. <laughs> Doesn't that happen to you? <laughs> I think they all do that. All right, so some onion. Um, potato starch. If you don't have that, just use some flour. Use a little bit of flour. Yeah, you can just use flour, but I've got all these gluten-free flours and one company, like, like for potato starch and tapioca, I've discovered this brand, Anthony's. It's great. I get, I get brown rice flour on there, psyllium husk. It's a really nice company. Okay, when you make um, traditional latkes with potato, it can get very wet from the starch. The potato leaches a lot of water and you end up sometimes squeezing it out. These are a little bit drier. Okay, so just mix everything together. Let's get a pan hot. So I've got about a 12 inch skillet here. I'm gonna use non, um, stainless steel. You could use cast iron. You could use nonstick if you have it, but I prefer I prefer the stainless steel or cast cast iron. So this is what my mixture looks like. And there's real like when you usually make it with just white potatoes, there's a lot of water in the bottom, not so much with this. You could add um, shredded apple to these, just like thinking of other things. Okay. And I'm gonna add enough avocado oil to come up about um, a quarter inch. So I don't like to like deep, deep fry. This is more like a pan sear. Okay, and I'm gonna shut off the soup. And while I'm waiting for the, the oil to get hot, we can blend this up, okay? And this I'm gonna do in a Vitamix. Sometimes you have to do this in batches. Like I can already see just from how much broccoli I use that it's gonna to be too much for my blender. So I'm gonna just try to get a nice amount of everything, the vegetables, the stock, broccoli and kale. Okay. And sorry about that. Marty, noise. is it okay yeah. to use an immersion blender instead? Yeah, 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 yeah. You just might not get it, you know, that same smoothness. But absolutely, yeah. you can use that. Yeah. Okay, so I just want to show you how nice and green this is. You see that? So you don't want to overcook that broccoli till it gets that dull oh. green. Oh. Well, what if you try this and you're like, I don't know, it's missing something. Yeah, well, it's either salt, like if it just tastes dull, then it's probably salt that needs to bring all the flavors up. Um, if it's too salty, you can add some lemon. That's a great trick to just kind of quiet down the salt. And if it needs to be brighter anyway, just a little, I'm gonna actually add a little bit. This has enough salt, it needs a little bit of lemon. Okay. Sometimes it's just a little squeeze of lemon that you need. And 
And the other, this is why I like having the cashew cream. I'll tell you in a second. Yeah, that's it. Okay. <clears throat> the cashew, this doesn't have a lot of fat in it, right? Our friend Rebecca Katz, who we mentioned earlier, she has this great way of explaining fat on, we don't think of it as a, as a taste like salt and salt, like salt and acid, but she describes fat as like a magic carpet. It kind of carries all the flavors across the tongue. So adding, when I, when I serve this soup, I usually add a drizzle of olive oil or that cashew cream would be really nice. Okay, my oil back here is ready. I just heard it kind of pop. Wow. So <clears throat> you can ask me any questions about this soup while I start to make the latkes. But I'm gonna take a little scoop of it and I'm gonna squeeze it between my hands and make a little patty or like a little, little disc and lay it in. If the oil is just splattering everywhere, your oil's too high. There's a question about, I get confused about grapeseed oil. Is it good for us or not? Here's my answer to that. Um, it's, it's good for high temperature cooking. I, I rarely use it, but um, it's stable at higher temperatures like this where you're, where you're frying. Um, it's omega-6. Um, you know, the, the best oil is olive oil. And look, traditionally, I mean, Annie, you were in, you were just in Italy, like they fry in olive oil. <laughs> they fry in olive oil. It's, there's a lot of controversy about how high temp, you know, how high you can take your olive oil before it oxidizes and, um, you know, creates free radicals in the body. But I do follow more traditional methods above all else. Um, so yeah, but I mean, that's my answer. I rarely use, I rarely use it and I rarely fry. So grapeseed oil is a once in a while thing for me. Okay, so I'm looking for the bottom edges to brown while, and then I just keep the soup in um, a mason jar. I mean, this, this gets eaten very quickly in my household. So, but it definitely freezes well. Isn't that a great color? I love that. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start making the hummus, if that's okay. I added the raisins into the chutney. Okay, I wanna talk about, I wanna talk about the hummus real fast. So <clears throat> I roasted a beet and it could be red or golden could be the chayoga. So I've got a golden beet. I'm just gonna cut this up a little bit and put this in. The beet serves a, a few functions. Um, certainly nutrition, color, and it adds a lot of moisture where um, when, I, when I make like classic hummus, which I use like all tahini, you need a lot more moisture to get it going. This adds like quite a bit of water. So it's not as much tahini or oil that you would use in another recipe. And then the chickpeas, I cooked from, from raw chickpeas. So I soaked them overnight. I did one cup. One cup usually makes, um, swells to three cups of chickpeas. And a little secret to extra creamy hummus when you make it is to put a little baking soda in with the boiling chickpeas. It just breaks them down and it makes them very, very soft. Okay, so I'm gonna add the chickpeas. Um, I'm going to add... Is two cans too much? It seems like more than three cups, but it, or is that okay? I think it should be about three cups because one can is okay. about one and a half. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to add some ground cumin, some paprika, a good pinch of salt. The should tahini. we strain the can, the liquid out? Should we like? Uh... Defin definitely. Yes. 
And rinse yes, the beans rinse, too. Rinse them, rinse them, shake them out. Yep. Okay, the tahini's in there and some lemon juice. And what happens when lemon, this is like if you're making dressings or sauces with lemon juice and tahini, the tahini will make the, the lemon, I'm sorry, the lemon juice will make the tahini seize a little bit and it'll get um, kind of like hardened and become a ball. So you always have to add some like ice water to thin it out. Okay, so you're gonna run some water into the food processor as this is running to just kind of smooth it back out. And then garlic. <clears throat> I think my recipe calls for two. I'm just gonna do one. Okay. So I'm gonna drizzle in the water. Give it a taste. Mm. Just adds this nice sweetness to it. I'm gonna add a little more salt. And then we're gonna serve it with a bit of um, za'atar on top. Zatar is a Middle Eastern spice mixture. Um, it, there's different versions of it depending on the region it comes from, but usually it's some blend of oregano, sesame seed, uh, sumac, sometimes thyme and salt. If you're serving this like for a party or a charcuterie board, um, even some like, maybe some chopped cooked beets on top to let people know what's in it. Okay, so some zaatar. One of my favorite spice mixtures. I put a paper towel over a cooling rack like this. And some of these are ready to go. I love that you didn't add any additional oil to the hummus. No, so yeah, traditional hummus, uh, like when you go to Israel, it is, it is just tahini, a lot of tahini. Mm -hmm. And sometimes oil, like a lot, they, well, they love their olive oil and it's like just drizzled on top. <laughs> um, some Allison asked, how do you keep your hands from staining from the beets? You don't, you just wash them right away and then it goes away a couple days later. <laughs> Or use a golden beet, they won't stain. Okay, so we've got the latkes. I'm gonna top it with the chutney. and our hummus and soup. And the best part, the truffles. We did it guys. That was a lot. How'd my, you do? Hummus is, my hummus is definitely um, sweet. I guess it's from the, the beets. The beet, yeah. Did you use a small one? Try this big, I don't know if that's- okay. So what would, would you add salt, maybe a little bit of lemon? I don't love it as lemon. 
Lemon? Okay. Lemon, lemon, yeah. Maybe a little more paprika, something savory. Okay. Yeah. Someone asked, um, where do you get Zatar and what is your favorite brand? Oh yes, I wanted to show you, thank you. Um, so this one is from Canaan. Um, this you can find in Whole Foods and Amazon. It's a really lovely blend, but there's Syrian, there's Lebanese, there's, there's you know, it's like curries. Um, there's a lot of different blends. So you find the one that you like. Well, you guys were a ton of fun. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you learned a few things and I hope you can add these to your repertoire. This was super fun. Um, talk about um, your community cooks that you're doing. Oh yeah, thanks. So I started this um, last year. It's called Cooking Companions. You can find it on my website, martywolfson.com. Every month there's two classes. I teach one and then I bring a guest chef who's usually also an advanced nutrition professional. And it's nice because you get a different perspective, uh, culinary perspective every single month. So Dr. Annie Fenn, who I'm sure many of you have listened to and learned from, she's gonna be up in January. She's the first one for the new year. Um, and then I've got a couple others through, um, the next season is gonna go through April. So you can sign up one at a time. You can also be a monthly subscriber and just, um, get every class and the recording. So the recordings you get as, as a subscriber. So you can watch them right. again. Okay. Awesome. So I hope everyone learned something good. I, I learned a lot. Great to see everybody. Great to cook with you all. Have a great holiday season. Be safe, be healthy. That's it. Enjoy the holiday, everyone. Mm -hmm.